Spirit of the Lord, we pray that you would help us this day. Without you, there is nothing we can do. Help us, Father. Help us. Grant us illumination into the things of the Spirit. Grant us grace that we might be established in your ways. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to welcome everybody to this powerful session. It's going to be a powerful session. The practice of the prophetic. And I believe that God is going to be doing great and mighty things. We started um, on the practicality of the prophetic two sessions ago. Um, precisely 24 hours ago, we had uh, the disciplines of the prophetic. How that we check the opportunities for the body of Christ and for prophets. We had about 18 of them. Eight for the prophet and ten for the body of Christ. And I gave an assignment that um, for as many that followed the teaching that you should evaluate where you belong. If you think you're a prophet or if you know you're a prophet, um, you should evaluate where you belong. However, sometimes you might not be sure and you would get clarity you know, along the way. But I believe that the teaching is um, detailed enough to help you gravitate towards your place of calling. You know, we had the 10 opportunities and disciplines for the body of Christ, the sound realm, the wealth realm, the health realm, the creatives, the intercession, um, and the others, actually. And um, in the morning, or let me say a few hours ago, we actually, you know, started a journey into the exercise of the prophetic. You know, we differentiated between the prophet and the prophetic people, the measure of the spirit, the prophetic spirit, what means to be a prophet, you know, the partnership with angels and some other things. You can get the teaching. As a matter of fact, the teaching of um, the exercise of the prophetic actually blessed me when I was listening again. We are going to ensure that we have them on all our platforms by the grace of the Lord. And um, tonight is a very deep subject, the practice of the prophetic. The practice of the prophetic. So we are going to be opening up the things believers must do to function as a prophetic hallelujah are you ready for tonight are you ready for what god is about to do please do well to share the link on facebook and on telegram so that people can understand and know what god is doing at this point in time amen i'm excited in my spirit and i believe that the highs of your understanding will be enlightened tonight in the mighty name of jesus holy spirit we pray that you open up our capacity to understand and to accommodate the realities of the Spirit, even as we begin tonight in the name of Jesus. All right? I'm going to do a quick recap of certain things because it is going to help us build on the things the Lord wants to do. Amen. In the morning, I was speaking on detoxification of, of the soul. Let me tell you something. The prophetic is actually the default state of man. Right? The prophetic is natural and the default state of man, every man. But one of the things that made it difficult was the fall of man. The fall of man ensured that corruption gained preeminence and the meaning of that is that we, are, we were caught off from the realities of the spirit. When the Lord said to man that you shall die, the death was not just physical. The death is the cessation of the life of the spirit. The death also means being caught off from spiritual realities. Are you with me? So that is one of the implications of the fall. So although when God made man, the prophetic was wired into his being. However, we lost it due to corruption. And by the grace of the Lord, we are going to be um, functioning effectively in that regard through these sessions by the name of the Lord. So I, I began to discuss on the subject of detoxification of the soul because let me tell you, Hi, Mamandronzo Freshita Kalapande. The fall of man didn't just affect man, it affected man and his environment. Meaning that the corruption is not just for the human soul, it also affected the environment. Meaning the energy level of God depreciates in your environment or depreciates in the environment of men. Except for certain places where men have hosted the presence of God. And so, such places as become a spiritual atmosphere, spiritual potter. There are examples of them in the Bible, Rama, Bethel, you know, Horeb, and some other places like that. But really, the fall of man also affects the deterioration of the environment. Ah, Mandrazozo Shakapalia, Livrende Kososondia. 
So basically, Kashina, Aventa Pladia. So basically, the environment um, in the realm of the spirit is becoming cloudy. The environment of man in the realm of the spirit becomes dark. That is why a man by default can be so corrupt and can be so infiltrated in the soul realm because the environment is corrupt. Rabokondo Shalabagadia, Suzevelen Ketekosia. All right, so a man that is born into the realm of men, he doesn't have to see wicked things. The environment itself conducts a level of darkness and wickedness because of the fall of man. And it also affected the animals. Some animals are not supposed to be that wild so that they will be eating flesh and some other things. It affected the environment. So a little boy can be in a family you know, it might be innocent, but you would get to know that as the boy begins to grow in a certain environment, you will start, you will start seeing certain traits. The boy might begin to lie. He might be developing lustful desires, you know, some wicked expressions. Hallelujah. So, thank you, Jesus. These things or the reasons for that is because of the, um, the contamination of the environment due to the fall. The contamination of the environment due to the fall. So I want to also let you know that um, the fall of man is not just for the human soul. So in, in, in a big to function in the prophetic, you have to recalibrate yourself, detoxifying your soul, right? It takes a while before the environment becomes healed. We have to host the presence of God in a place. But then the first thing you must do as a person is that the lost in your soul because you this is the, the truth we acquire lost and weak energies right by just interacting with the environment that is why a believer must be on fire and you must carry your own atmosphere such that the environment of a place will not limit you and mind you there are also some environments that owe certain things for instance you might be in a place and you will get certain ideas every environment has its own possibility Every environment has its own advantage in corruption and, you know, certain things. For instance, you might travel to Brazil and you see that the lust in your soul is on the high side. Amen. While you might travel to Canada and you are saying that you are having ideas in a certain regard. So every environment has its own level of corruption. Thank you, Jesus. The corruption of every environment affects the human soul by default. So you don't even have to be... Um, be involved in some hacks before you become corrupt by fellowshipping and interacting in certain environment it affects your soul all right it affects your soul blessed be the name of the lord okay um i hope there's no problem on facebook uh, some of you are joining um, telegram now if you can hear me on facebook please can you just send a message so that i can know that we are active hallelujah so just like i was saying Renewal of the mind is very important. It helps you, you know, remove the junks and the weakness in your soul. And it also enlarges your capacity to contain the things of God. All right. Thank you so much. It also enlarges your soul to contain the things of God. That is why it is important. Recalibration of the mind. You have to detoxify yourself. And let me tell you something. The, the, I, I, I hope we are really ready for the prophetic people of God. I hope we are really ready because... It takes a lot of time for your soul to be restored. Do you know what God did to um, David? He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He led me to the still waters. But there is a patch you must get. He said, he restored my soul. He led me to the path of righteousness. There are corridors in the realm of the prophetic you cannot attain and you cannot tread until there is a restoration of your soul. One of, one of the things God did to David was that he, th there was a soul reset. There was a soul reset. God had to change his mind before the Lord took him deeper in the prophetic. Why do you think David was able to understand certain deep mysteries in the scriptures? The guy was telling things before time began. The guy was t telling us the, the interplay between the Father and the Son. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. That guy was able to capture Jesus and the Father. It was not easy. His soul had to be restored. God had to change something about his soul so that he could accommodate certain deep things in the prophetic. All right, so in your work with God, sometimes um, it's not so much about new things. It's much more about the old things being passed, you know, being removed or being dealt with. 
okay the mindset you've been functioning with from your childhood when you attempt to function in the prophetic god will begin to renew your mind so but many people are not ready for this just like i was saying in the morning your christian experience should not just be prayer point based all right it shouldn't just be prayer point based you must have some exercise you must have some things you do to ensure that you know the capacity of your mind is um conducive enough for the holy spirit so i also said something about exposure and adventure the more you expose yourself to the things of the spirit the more you know you have capacity to function and the truth is this is the foundation of all things you can't function in the prophetic if you don't want it if you don't desire it i'm not talking of wishing things now listen do you know that some of you if you are hungry you attempt to eat isn't it really to function in the prophetic you must be hungry in the similitude of the flesh you must be hungry in the similitude of the flesh meaning that your your whole being must desire the prophetic some of you you only wish the prophetic you are not ready to do what it takes some of you when you are hungry you pay the price of buying food of cooking of leaving your immediate environment to get something to eat if you are also um interested in functioning in the prophetic you must be hungry for it not just wishing it oh i wish i could hear god more but you are always on your phone pressing your phone sleeping anyhow you know it won't come that way if you are really ready for the prophetic you must be hungry for it you must thirst for it the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled not just some desires i, I wish i was functioning in this dimension it doesn't work that way you have to be hungry you have to test for it it has to be your priority it has to consume you glory to god so you you, you have to get this your desire and your willingness your desire and your willingness really matters in the prophetic now let's begin we are still on the the, the extension of the exercise of the prophetic i'm going to tell you some things you would do to really be effective but then also you must also note this yielding to promptings is also key to prophetic efficiency yielding to the promptings of the spirit sometimes you might just have a desire to pray such nudgings, such promptings has a lot of advantage right for you for instance if you're sometimes i would just be sleeping and i wake up with a burden to pray responding to those promptings really helps you to be better in the prophetic it helps you to it gives you an edge in the prophetic hallelujah so sometimes you might just feel like you should leave your friends or an association sometimes you might just feel like quitting your chat and just walking sometimes i might just feel like walking in the place there is no words there's nothing to say but i just feel like walking in a place walking in a place and before you know it i'm getting ideas i'm getting certain prophetic um insight so yielding to promptings is very important this is the thing the holy ghost really reaches out to us every one of us but some of us are, are too insensitive to his promptings before you become deeper in the prophetic you know picking the things of the spirit you have to yield to promptings the promptings to pray the promptings to you know um fast and just obey the things of the spirit Your, the promptings matters hmm. it matters it matters so prompt obedience see let me tell you obedience is how prophets are made yielding to the holy ghost is how prophets are made it's how prophetic people are made you can't be skipping the instructions of the lord or doing it at your leisure time or at your convenience and expect to grow in the prophetic god told abraham leave your father's house he didn't complain the guy left he didn't even know where he was going and the first prophet in the scriptures was abraham i hope you know that yes was abraham and he became a prophet by yielding yielding he became a prophet by obeying the word of the lord even though he was not sure many of you 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 are too sensual you are too mental you want everything to to make sense to you the things of the spirit is not the things of the flesh how um things works in the spirit is not how it works in the flesh many of you you want certain things to make sense to you before you 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 begin to work with god no it doesn't have to make sense abraham had no clue of where he was going can you imagine hi and our generation it will take a lot of personal conviction for you to work in the prophetic because now 
everybody is trying to question your move. Imagine telling your parents that, mom, dad, I'm, I'm, I'm going out of this house. They said, okay, where are you going? And you said, you don't know. What is it going to look like? This is exactly what Abraham did. The guy was just joining. He didn't know where he was going, but he, he was obeying God. That is how the prophetic works. The prophetic, you don't know the destination, but you trust the, the journey. Mm. In the prophetic, you might not know the destination, but you trust the beginning. You trust the journey. That is exactly how prophets and prophetic people are made. Many of you, you want to calculate the entire journey. You want to know where there will be stops, where there will be you know, this and that. No, in the prophetic, you trust the voice of the Holy Ghost. You trust the voice of the promptings, even though you are not sure the end. That is the life of faith. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it doesn't have to make sense to you. Many of you want to calculate A plus B, 1 plus 2, before you start yielding to prophetic things. It might not work that way. Sometimes the Lord will ask you to do some crazy things. You won't even know what it is and it might not even make sense. But these things really helps you and gives you an edge in the Holy Spirit. Abraham was a prophet and one of the finest prophets in the scriptures because he yielded to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So on your consistency and yielding to promptings really helps you. Really, really helps you. Hallelujah. Linda, you are welcome. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And also, I'm going to give two things before we go to how to practice the prophetic. In exercising yourself in the prophetic, you must be a student of the Word of God. Right? Some people are not really... Um, they don't really have the understanding and the weight of what the word of God does to a man. When you read the word of God or you study the Bible, it becomes um, a standard for your oppression in the prophetic. Studying the word of God and giving to the word of God is very, very crucial to your prophetic journey because it will help your interpretation. It will help how you weigh realities. There was a time... Um, we were in a, a meeting, 12 hours prayers, right? We were in a 12 hours program and a lady was giving a vision that um, he saw that we were dragons, right? He saw that all of us were dragons and something, something was happening, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't remember <laughs> the, the end of the vision, but I knew that that vision wasn't accurate. We can't be dragons in the realm of the spirit. It's not possible. Mm. Yes, we can't be. Because based on the authority of the scriptures, we know who the dragon is. Amen. We know who the dragon is. Based on the prophetic insight, when you see a goat, a goat in the realm of the spirit, my mean disobedience or um, attaining power forcefully. Ah, oh my God. I think we will have to um, add two sections to our prophetic um, journey. We will have to deal with interpretation of dreams and vision. We'll talk about that interpretation of dreams and vision. How that I will pick some scenarios in the scriptures and interpretation thereof. Inter we will do we will do that. Maybe um, Monday evening we'll do question and answers and interpretation of dreams and vision. It's very important. When you see goats in the Bible, it could mean disobedience. It could mean corruption. It could mean forcefully attaining power. If you study the book of Daniel, there was a mention of the goats and some other things. Right. So if somebody is saying that, oh. I'm seeing you as a dragon in the realm of the spirit. It means that you are of the devil. The dragon is the devil based on the interpretation of scriptures. Hallelujah. So there are some things that when you, when you see in the prophetic, your understanding of the Bible will tell you what it means. Hallelujah. If you see a lion in the, in the spirit realm, what does it mean? It could mean a lot of things. It could mean dominion. It could mean power. It could mean that an enemy... Is coming. The Bible says the devil is roaming around like a lion looking for wood to devour. It could mean that the enemy is trying to prey on you. So these things we, we inform the way you interpret reality. Hallelujah. If you see waters, maybe you see a flood in the, in the Bible. What does it mean? It could mean a lot of things. It could mean that, um, you know, there is trouble coming for you. It could mean that God wants to overwhelm your challenges. The Bible said that when the enemy comes, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise standard against them. And you see how I'm using the scriptures to interpret my dreams or my vision. All right? So when you see um, waters, it could mean the word of God. The Bible said the voice of the Lord is as many waters. 
when you see waters, it could mean revelation. It could mean a lot of things. So reading the Bible helps your interpretation of prophetic things, right? You wouldn't know until you have done it enough. So, and a lot of you, some of you rather, you are um, selective of what to read in the Bible. Some of you, you are more peculiar or you are more particular rather about New Testament. <laughs> There are some prophetic things you will never get to if you don't read both the New Testament and the Old Testament. As much as new creation realities um, is more pronounced in the New Testament, Old Testament contains certain deep things of God that you must pay attention to. Even the Leviticus, the Numbers, the Deuteronomy, the books that seems boring to a lot of people, has a lot of spiritual information that will help you master the prophetic. All right? So don't joke with the Word of God. It becomes a standard for weighing spiritual realities. When you understand the word of God by studying the Bible, you will know how to compare the spiritual with the spiritual. Amen. I, I, I hope you are being blessed right now. Can you say thank you, Jesus? All right? Also, to exercise yourself in the prophetic, you need to be a man that loves to worship God. God loves sound. I would say we will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. So when you sing unto the Lord, it doesn't matter if you have a good voice or not. You open the supernatural you have much more access to the things of the Spirit because God inhabits the praises of His people. So any time you are praising God, you are creating a space for God to occupy. God inhabits the praises of His people. So when you, when you live a life of praise and worship and adoration, not just trying to fake it, but you really mean it, you are creating capacity for God to fill. And when God inhabits the praises of His people, what happens is that you step up in your dimensions of God. You step up in your expressions of God. You step up in your knowledge of God. You step up in your capacity and powers of God. Do you understand? So when you praise, sometimes I might be worshiping God for one hour, three hours. You know, something happens to your soul. God fills you up. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So sound and worship is also important, you know, when you're engaging the prophecy. So now, how to practice the prophetic. These are the exercises, right? How to practice the prophetic. So what are the things you must do stepwisely to grow in the prophetic, to engage the prophetic? Everything I've said, detoxification, exposure, desire, willingness, meditation, right? Creating time, personal time for God, you know, it helps you exercise yourself. It, it makes you fit in the prophetic. But, you know, how to really engage the prophetic and how to process the prophetic I'll just give a few things tonight. Then to, in the morning, we'll, take, we'll talk about the mastery of the, um, the prophetic. Are you ready? Glory to God. Now, listen. Listen to this. <laughs> Don't question God, but ask God question. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm going to say that again. Don't question God, but learn to ask the Holy Spirit questions. See, many people, they go through things in life they've tried to question God. Do you know what, what it means to question God? It means you are the boss. It means you have so much audacity. It means you are, you are like, um, you are like an investigative um, agency or something. Don't question God, but ask God questions. To question God means um, you are trying to, it, 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 it looks like this anyways. It means you are trying to question his authority. You are trying to, um, see him as something that um, you can just uh, how do I put it now you are, you, are, you are trying to make it look like somebody you can just um, treat as a subject to question God is that you are trying to treat God as a subject but asking God question is much more of a mutual relationship it's much more of a friendship it's much more of an interaction learn to ask the Holy Ghost question sometimes maybe something happened to you you, maybe you lost your money or you were defrauded or somebody died in your family. You're not trying to question God. God, where are you? Or, you know, trying to say all kinds of things that might be very provocative. God doesn't have problem with whatever it is you say because he knows you are a man, but it won't help your relationship. Now, how many people that have questioned God have really gotten the answer? For instance, maybe a lady lost her husband was trying to question God. Lord, this and that, I've been, I've been serving you. This and that, why did you allow my husband to die? Most of them don't get answers because they are, they, are, they are asking the question or they are questioning God from a wrong standpoint. Don't question God, but ask God question. All right? So 
Maybe it's something bad happened to you and you're trying to God, it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. Why would that happen to me? I mean, God might answer you even if you are wrong with your approach because he's a merciful God and he's a loving God. But sustaining that mindset will not help your relationship with God. Even if any terrible thing happens to me, right? I will ask God question, not question him, Lord. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm, I might I might cry, <laughs> I might express my dissatisfaction or my pain, but I'm not going to act as a rebel or somebody that is angry to God, towards God, all right? It might happen, but then you must not do it in a disrespectful way. That is exactly what I'm driving at. A lot of people, you know, question God, why, am I, why is my family broke? Ever since my childhood, we've been experiencing pain. We've been experiencing hardship. God, why is my life like this? You know, you are unfair. You are unjust. You know, you know approaching God from that standpoint is going to strain your relationship and your prophetic, you know, um, depth. So it's important that you learn to engage the Holy Ghost, engage the Holy Spirit and ask question, Holy Spirit, why is it that um, Adam was the first that was made? And what was your intention when you were creating Adam? That is how you grow in the word of God. That is how you grow in the prophetic. Holy Spirit, what exactly did you do to the hair? Why did you establish the, 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 the hair upon the waters? What is the significance? So you learn to question and ask the Holy Ghost certain deep questions, not from a disrespectful standpoint. You are not God's creator. God is the creator. Amen. So you must learn to respect God and ask him questions. Not just concerning your needs, right? But ask God questions about him, his kingdom and his environment. It opens your mind to more. Amen. Learn to ask questions in a certain regard. Holy Spirit. What do you think about my potentials? What do you think about what I carry? You know, just begin to ask some question. Holy Spirit, what is the power behind this? You know, learn to ask the Holy Ghost question with your mind and expect the feedback. Many people are they are they are on a monologue conversation with the Holy Ghost. They are just the ones speaking. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want this. Speak to the Holy Ghost and expect the feedback. That is why it will take a lot of time, right? It will take a lot of time. So we take a lot of time. Ask the Holy Ghost question, Father, um, how can I work in power? Because every individual, there is, a, there is a manual for your manifestation. I'm going to say this again. Every individual, there is a manual for your manifestation. We won't function in power and we won't attain relevance the same way. It's not possible. I'm, I'm going to do something. If, you, if you're on Facebook, I'm going to play something now. If you're on Facebook and you see that the colors is changing, there is a background color right now and the color is changing. That is how we are in the realm of the spirit. We are all different. We are different colors. And the combination of everything makes it beautiful. Can you see that the color is changing right now? The color of my face is changing because I have a light that ha that, that's got different colors. Now, I'm, that is how every believer is. You are a particular and a peculiar color. And the, your mixture is different from your neighbor. There are primary colors, there are secondary colors. For certain secondary color and tertiary color, it will take the mixture of this color to make them. So how you will attain power, how you will attain relevance, and how you will manifest might not be exactly the way your neighbor will manifest. That is why you have to understand your own manual. And you can't understand your effectiveness. You can't understand your uniqueness until you ask Holy Ghost question. There was a time I was asking the Holy Ghost question that, Lord, what can I do to work, to work in power? The Lord was saying that I should practice much more of worship. When I got to a phase, right, I said, God, what must I do to sustain a global ministry? He said, study the word of God more because you are going to be given perspective to nations. And I was like, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, right? So that is my own um, emphasis for working in power. For you, God might be like, okay, if you ask the Holy Ghost question, Father, what must I do to walk in power in this way? God might tell you that you should focus more on meditative writing, right? Meditative writing, you can just, you might just be like, okay, 2 a.m. every morning, pick up your pen, chant in the Holy Spirit for 30 seconds or 2 minutes or 5 minutes, and whatever comes to your mind, start writing. That is peculiar to your, to your person. That is how you will operate and walk in power and your ideas is going to change the world. All right? So, in working in the prophetic, you must learn to ask the Holy Ghost question. Father, I think I'm, I'm being lustful these days. What can I do to curb these things? God might tell you fast. 
right? So learn to ask the Holy Ghost question about every little thing. Father, I think I'm being temperamental. I think I get hungry easily these days. You know, God help me. What, what, what do you suggest I should do? Those things helps you a lot and it helps you to engage the prophetic. I told you in the, in the, in the morning session that every word of God that proceeds out of the mouth of God makes you grow. Right? The Bible said that God breathed into the nostrils of man. After the Lord created Adam, he breathed into his nostrils. And Adam became naturally prophetic. Because the breath of God was what filled him. The breath of the Lord uh, you know, upon Adam or in Adam was not just for oxygen and carbon dioxide. No, it was the realities and the life of God functioning in him and through him. And that actually made him prophetic. Okay, that breath of the Almighty made him prophetic. So, now that we have transited from darkness to light, now that we have been saved, you need to hear God more. Because every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord fills your soul, fills your spirit, and it energizes you to operate in the prophetic more accurately. The more you hear God, the more it, 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 it gets, or the easier it gets to hear God, the easier it gets to function in the prophetic. So, and you can't hear God if you are not engaging him, if you are not asking him questions. And I already told you that don't um, exalt your, your problems. Don't exalt your situation and circumstances. The Bible says that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Meaning that, you know, the result you are looking for is by exalting Jesus. Focusing more on the de desire of God and the intention of God above your personal problems. Father, you know, when you come to the presence of God, let the presence of God um, and the person of God be lifted high beyond and above your personal problem in this way you will engage god you know from a better standpoint because a lot of christians are not growing because they are too conscious of their problem and their challenges and they think that is not working in their life whereas you are speaking to a king when you are with a king you must pay homage you must respect the protocol of his palace and of his kingdom before you even present your problem that is how it works in the realm of the spirit but many believers are talking to God like he's an errand boy. It doesn't work like that. Amen. So engage the Holy Ghost and ask questions. The more you ask questions and, and you have a response from the Spirit, right? There is, a, there is a breath of the Almighty that overwhelms you, that overwhelms your spirit. And it quickens you to be sharp in the prophetic. Now, I'm going to say this again. Please pray more in the Holy Spirit. Pray more in the Holy Spirit. And have prayer projects. There was a time when I was in 200 level. In, in the university, um, I began to pray on certain parts of my spirit body. For instance, I could pray, Lord, open my eyes. I could pray that prayer for three hours. When I was done, Lord, open my ears for three hours. Now, these things, it doesn't mean I wasn't hearing God. I was hearing God then. I could hear the things of the spirit. I was, to an extent, sharp in the Holy Spirit. But I needed an upgrade. Because the things of God... Is always deeper than your imagination. If you are seen in the spirit, there is always more. And if you want to see more, you have to upgrade yourself by doing certain things. So before then, or um, during that time, I was hearing the Holy Ghost in a measure of light. I was already sharp in the Holy Ghost to an extent, but I needed more. I could see a, a certain level of limitation within me. And I knew that, I knew that God, I, I just need to hear you in a sharper and a better way. So I started praying concerning my eyes. It's a prayer project. Lord, help me. Open my eyes. I will pray that prayer for two hours or one hour. Open my ears. One hour or two hours. Lord, give me wisdom. These are not just... Because many believers, under 30 minutes, they are done with all their prayers. I'm not saying it's not effective, but you can't really make progress that way. You must give it time so that you can download the, the weight of what you are trying to function in. Sometimes I might spend two hours, Lord, just give me wisdom. When I'm done, Lord, give me understanding. Prayer projects. And I do this by praying in tongues. You know, paying attention to all my spirit parts. Lord, fill me with power. Fill me with boldness. So as I'm doing this, I'm acquiring the energy of the Holy Ghost. And I'm upgrading such parts to be effective. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. So learn to pray more in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, Lord, I think my mind is weak. 
Lord, I think I am I'm, I have little strength. Lord, increase my strength. These are the things that you must really focus on to work in power and the prophetic. It strengthens you a lot. Amen. And sometimes if you are not seeing results in the place, Lord, give me the strategy of the Spirit. They, um, Job said something, said, In the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, meaning that Job had secrets of God upon him, he downloaded the secret of God. So when you pray this prayer, you will have insight and access, right? You will have insight and access to the deep things of God. Now listen, the Bible said, <laughs> And the Lord has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. The Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Do you know the weight of that implication? Meaning, sometimes when you are praying, the Holy Ghost will have to scan the deep things of God. Now, why? See, let me tell you. The deep things of God is hidden in God. It is exclusive to any other entities. It is contained in God. God had to hide the deep things about your potential and about his own power that should work in you. Because if it is open, it will not be valuable. It can be corrupted. For instance, imagine that the powers and the potentials that will make you great is just and it's, it's too open. It's an open source in the realm of the spirit. The devil can hijack it. But there are certain things that it cannot be hijacked. God kept it in the depth of himself. And that even for you to withdraw those realities and such powers, the Holy Ghost has to search the deep things of God so that such deep things can be revealed unto you. Such treasures, such powers can be impacted within you. Are you with me? So the Holy Ghost has to search the deep things of God. And imagine the Holy Ghost is searching the deep things of God. And before it was done, you are already done with your prayers. For instance, it's like scanning. Do you know some technology that if you want, maybe a face detection technology, it will have to scan. Imagine that the, the, the software is still scanning and you have already left the place. And that's how many believers are. While the Holy Ghost is searching the deep things of God, they have left the place. And the Holy Ghost cannot reveal unto them the deep things of God because they are not staying enough. The Holy Ghost had to do some deep search and transfer those realities in Christ to you. But you need time for such things to, to be complete, for such downloads to be complete, for such transference to be complete. Bible said, this, the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Maybe you are praying for wisdom. So the Holy Ghost will start searching the depth of God's wisdom, the wisdom that is beyond the scope of this world, the wisdom that is beyond the lords and principalities and powers. The Holy Ghost will have to search the deep things of God to fetch out wisdom that is deeper than time, wisdom that is deeper than all angels. It will take the Holy Ghost to withdraw such deep things from the God himself to, to transfer those things to you. But many of you, before the Holy Ghost is done, you are already tired or you are already distracted. It might take days of prayer consistency before the deep things of God is withdrawn and impacted to you. It might take months. But before the Holy Ghost is done, you're already watching Korean movies. Man, that is why consistency is powerful. It's po the Holy Ghost such the deep things of God. Because man is supposed to contain and accommodate certain deep things of God. Man had edge over demons and angels. The Bible said the things that angels love to behold. Angels are studying you. And they are learning from you because there are certain powers a man can carry that angels don't have. Because those things are the deep things of God. It is, it is in the very deep of the Father himself. And the Holy Ghost, we have to search for those things. We have to make a deep search, then transfer it to you. And this thing takes time before the protocol and the download is complete. You need to give God time and pray more in the Holy Ghost. So that the wisdom of God can be impacted to you. So that the life of God can be activated in you. The Holy Ghost is searching deep things right now. But will you stay to accommodate those things? The prophetic is not hard. To function in power is not hard. But what is struggling with your time and attention? Right? You, I, I want to pray for you right now. That the Lord will give you strength to stay. The strength to, to wait upon the Lord so that the downloads of the Spirit will be complete. And you will be a, a recipient and a carrier of the divine life in the name of Jesus. Many of you, you are too hasty. The Bible said that do not be hasty in God's presence. This is one of the things the Lord told me in the book of Ecclesiastes. Do not be hasty in the presence of the king. Do not be hasty. Hastiness um, makes you miss a lot of things. Don't be hasty. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you are hearing me, say glory to God. All right, so you need to give God time. Go on prayer projects. Lord, open my eyes. And this is the thing. Sometimes when you are praying, nothing happens. You won't feel anything. Sometimes I might pray for five hours, nothing will happen. I won't even sense, you know, many things. But do it. Something is happen, happening. The Bible said that Paul was saying that when I pray in tongues, my mind is unfruitful. There are times you will be praying in tongues, you will be feeling it. You will know that there is something going on. There are times you will pray, you won't feel anything. Your mind will be completely unfruitful because where you are treading is beyond the scope of your mind. Your mind cannot accommodate those things. So you have to trust your spirit in such blank moments. I is somebody hearing what I'm saying? There are some times you will be totally blank. When you are totally blank, it doesn't mean you are, you are not doing anything. It means where you are treading is beyond the scope of the energies and, and the, the knowledge you have been exposed to. So you have to be blank because your machine, your equipment, the technology of your soul and body is too shallow to comprehend those things. So in, that, in those blank moments, it's like you are upgrading. So afterwards and subsequently, you will catch up with those things and your understanding will be much more broad. Are you with me? So sometimes you might be praying in tongues and you are blank. Continue. Just make sure that you are focused. Glory to Jesus. Are you being blessed tonight? Alright? And of course, when you are approaching the prophetic things, don't be anxious and don't be afraid. Alright? Don't be anxious and don't be afraid. Learn to practice stillness. Okay? Learn to practice stillness. Learn to practice stillness. As you do this, um, the, the, the voice of the Holy Ghost will gain preeminence over the junks and the distractions in your mind. Let me tell you, if you only know the bubbles. So let me tell you, I, I, I've been praying for a while and I got to know how the mind works in the place of prayer. Sometimes there is all kinds of turbulence, so all kinds of, <laughs> let me put it in this way, dancing going on in your mind. Fluctuations, waves and patterns. And sometimes... God has spoken, but your mind is still not ready to hear. So you might pray for five hours or seven hours. Six hours of those, of, of those seven is to ensure that your soul becomes conducive, not necessarily the substance itself. So sometimes your mind will be jiggling. There will be all kinds of activities going on. Stay. Stay. It means that God is flushing out the distractions. Ah, before, I, before I was balanced... In the spirit realm, it took me a year of consistency, of praying three hours almost every day. I will be praying, I will be seeing nonsense. I will be seeing jargons. It's because God is working on the junks in my soul, was working on the junks in my soul. And it took a lot of time before there was stability. Many of you are not ready for this. You are distracted. You, you cut off the process of renewal before it is complete. Are you with me? So, some of it, this, these are some of the things you would experience in the place of prayer when we are working with the Lord. And sometimes you might feel like you are not growing. There is growth. But it's just that you don't know that those things are working for your good. Amen. Sometimes you'll be praying and you will just feel like you should go and play or you should go and sleep or you should go and watch something. It's the distraction of your soul reacting to the energy level of the Holy Ghost. It's the junks in your soul reacting to a change. So it is trying to magnify itself by flooding your mind with a picture that is not consistent with your prayers. But then, as you continue, they will be subdued and the visions of God will begin to flood you. The, 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 the person of God will be more real to you. Hi! Oh my God, I hope you are, you are hearing what I'm saying. Because this is really going to help you when you begin to practice these things. Hallelujah. Alright, I don't want us to stay too long. And I'm also going to say this, people of God. You need a platform. You need a platform. You need a platform to practice the prophetic. Many of you, you only sit in church. You hear, you hear, you hear. There is no platform for you to do. Now, the church is not necessarily the place of performance. Everybody will not handle the mic. Everybody might not have the opportunity to lead something. That is not how God um, made it. Actually, the pattern for the church is house-to-house -house interaction right many of you when your girlfriends come i'm talking of ladies now when you have your friends come you only gist and gossip but such times and for the guys too when your guys come what you do is to drink alcohol and to play games such time is for discussion and prayers 
And when you do those things, that is when you practice the prophetic. That is when you see a lot of things beyond the church walls. You need a platform. And this is one of the things I'm grateful for when I was in school. There were all kinds of platforms for me to grow in the prophetic. Beyond the church and the fellowship times. I am so proud of this and I, and I love what God did. Because even in fellowship, I, I attended a fellowship in my school when I was in the university. There were, there were limited time in the fellowship itself for every individual to express itself, himself rather, in the, in the prophetic or in the Holy Ghost. Fellowship is just much more about receiving. There is a need for you to practice what you are learning. So sometimes it might, it might be when you are praying with a friend, that is when you start practicing and exercising the power of visions. That is when you start practicing utterance. That is when you will start practicing certain things. You need platforms. And it might not even be with praying with friends. It might be in your workplace. It might be that you, you need to go to certain places to just express the prophetic. Amen. I grew in confidence in, in those platforms. Because after interpreting what I'm, I was seeing in the realm of the Spirit and it was confirmed, I grew in confidence, in exposure, and it really helped me to be stronger in the prophetic. Hallelujah. Everybody listening to me, you need a platform. And you need to take your relationship seriously with men. You need to get some of your friends that all you do is gossip. My lady, please let us pray. We need to exercise ourselves. Do you know that every one of us should have been sharp in the prophetic since we were young? But many of you, you are in the realm of visions. You are, you are in a time of vision, but you are not seeing vision. Because the foundational things that should equip you to see visions, you are still lacking behind. Bible says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So at a very young age, at the age of five years, six years, seven years, eight years, ten years, that is when we should be prophesying. Every one of us and every one of you listening to me right now, you're supposed to be prophesying to understand the prophetic at a very young age. Now, if you are in your 20s, you are in your years of vision. So you need visions right now, but you won't be effective in visions, interpretation and rendering the vision if you have not gone through the elementary stage of, on, of the prophetic so now God we have to help you to have speed so that you can have the knowledge you needed to be effective in your purpose purpose is not hard it is very easy it's very simple it's just because you are you are so behind time in prophetic exposure hallelujah are you with me you need a platform you have to take your relationship with my girl please let us pray we need to exercise ourselves in the Holy Ghost 30 minutes in, in, in a day or periodically, it's fine. The platforms I had in school and in certain places helped me. Sometimes personal evangelism, it really helped. You know, I was praying for people. I started seeing their names. I started growing in, you know, in interacting with people. You know, the things I hear, I say. Whether I was right or wrong, many of you are afraid of being wrong. There were times I was very wrong. Or probably I wasn't hearing right. They were very, you know... There were many times like that. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid to be wrong. You need to um, test your, these things and fail. Test and fail, you know, so that you can be sharper and stronger in the prophetic. Are you with me? You need a platform. You need a platform. And don't make the platform too religious and be bound by all kinds of rules. Allow the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost in, in such platforms. All right? It might be in your workplace. Practice. Um, hearing God for people when, you are, when they are talking. Maybe somebody is complaining about his, his family or something. Try and be asking the Holy Ghost as the person is speaking. Lord, what do you think is going on here? How can I give a word for the, to this person that will help him? That is how you practice the prophetic. Expectation as somebody is speaking. Somebody might be telling me things are not looking fine. You are, you are quick to hear what the person is saying and you are also quick to hear the Holy Ghost. How can I help this person? The Lord is just my minister to you that pray with him. And as you are praying, you will have more perspective as to what the person should do. And I will take away the problem and um, solve this, the, the, the thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you with me? So these are the things you must do. You must do. You need a platform. And it's, it's not just something that must be with your friends. Even in your family, when your parents are complaining, there is so much depth in the house. You ask the Holy Ghost, what must we do? You know, what can... What can happen at this time? What are the instructions that would help us at least lessen the effect of these things? So you inquire in your subconscious mind as you are interfacing with reality. That is how to also grow in the prophetic. I hope somebody is hearing me. 
Glory to the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. So, some other things that will help you. Fasting helps. Fasting is not necessarily a big deal. It's a big deal <laughs> because it helps you to um, to be sharp. It helps you to detoxify every unnecessary fleshly desires and weights. That is the goal of fasting. Fasting is a sacrifice of, you know, subjecting the desires of your flesh. So it helps. It helps. I fasted a lot and I know that it really helps. It really, really helps. So you might want to do that too as the Lord is helping you. Okay. I want to end now. In the morning, we are going to be doing, I hope you've gotten something. Amen. In the morning, we are going to be doing the mastery of the prophetic. It's going to be a terrible teaching. Please don't miss it for anything. And probably on Monday evening, we'll talk on interpretation of dreams and vision and question and answer. Is that all right? Okay, so how do you measure your growth in the prophetic? When you become fully aware that you're not playing. When you become fully aware that something is happening to you. That is how you know you are growing. You know that that is not the person you used to be before. All right? When you, you start noticing that something is changing about you. You might not be able to explain it in its entirety. But you know something is changing within you. You know something is being added. Hallelujah. And of course, when you start having accurate expressions, there were times all my interpretation were false or were not really that accurate. But then, when you start seeing consistency and accuracy, you know that, wow, I'm really growing in the prophetic. In terms of dreams, in terms of writings, inspiration, in terms of interpretations, when you start seeing consistency and its accuracy, it means you are growing. And when you start seeing that there is performance around your life as regards the prophetic interactions and engagement. For instance, there was a time I told a woman, in fact, there are all kinds of instances that the woman came to me that she has been married for six years without um, fruit of the womb. I told the woman, before your seventh year anniversary, right, you are going to give back to a baby boy. It, four days before his um, seven years anniversary, it, she gave back to a baby boy. And she used to call me a prophet and some other things. So such things helps you understand that, no, I'm not playing in the prophetic. I, I'm getting somewhere. Amen. You know, I began to pray for people that had madness and there was results. Began to speak to somebody that this is going to happen. There was a day I told my parents, something is going to happen today. It began to happen. There was a time I told my parents, one of my, my mom, don't patronize this woman. I saw her in the realm of the spirit. What I saw was not looking good. My mommy was questioning it because the woman looked innocent until after a while she got to know that she, she was a traditionalist and that, you know, she was engaged in some rituals and some other things. So it was like, wow, you are really a prophet. So um, some of these things helps you know that you are really growing, but it will take a lot of time to begin to check your growth pr process in the prophetic. You just need to be consistent. I hope tonight you've been helped by the Lord. I, I be, please these teachings you might need to listen to them this is um i think this should be the ninth teaching i want to believe this is the ninth teaching that is one two three four five six seven eight nine this is the ninth you might need to listen to these teachings all over again so that you can grow especially from five to ten from five deep things is on youtube you might need to listen to this thing over and over again because faith comes by hearing not when you hear oh you didn't you didn't get what i just said Faith comes by hearing present continuous tense, not, you know, an instance. Faith comes by hearing. That's why sometimes I might have read a scripture 20 times, but it will only make sense the 21 time. I needed those 20 times of consistency to attain unto the revelation the 21 time. So sometimes you just don't listen to this message once and just like, okay, that's it. You might need to listen to it over and over again. So there are many things I've said that you might not understand until you hear it again and you're like wow this is really making sense but many of you think if i listen to it once i've captured everything really so faith comes by hearing hearing is present continuous tense as you keep hearing and keep hearing there is light it's getting brighter the scope of your understanding is changing and shifting glory to god so these are the things that is really going to help you i hope you you've been blessed tonight i have been blessed as a person and in the morning, we are getting into the mastery of the prophetic. We're going to be a terrible teaching and the Lord is going to help us. It's going to be practical. And um, God is going to 
prove itself. Now, let me tell you something. The prophetic grows by engagement. You, or let me say you grow in the prophetic by engagement. And every time counts. Every time counts. You grow in the prophetic by engagement. All right? It's just like, you know, anything you do, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the better you get at it. Glory to Jesus. I pray for everyone listening under the sound of my voice. The Lord give you grace to be disciplined. Every distraction in your soul, relationship distraction, challenges that is making you weak to approach the things of the Spirit, I remove those things in the name of Jesus and receive the grace, the forbearance to continue in the things of the Spirit this season. You won't be weary when you're supposed to wait and you won't miss your season. Every one of us at this time, we should have mastered these things so that we can show for the glory of God. But it's like many of us who are still missing on the elementary thing. The Lord will grant you speed such that in little time, your foundation will be solid and you will have what it takes to approach life and to manifest the realities of God in your time. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you practice the prophetic, you have light, you grow. Oh my God. I'm seeing a lady right now. You are wearing something like a, a, white, a white sleeve or something with a black um, um, shirt or something. And um, you, you are kind of sitting on a chair and listening and listening and listening. And the Lord is saying that um, he wants to change your understanding, the way you see and understand things. You have a desire for God, but you've not really been consistent. But the Lord is saying that he's going to change your understanding and he's going to help you this season such that you will see more, you will hear more, and um, you will start seeing the realm of the Spirit the way it is, not just as the physical. You start seeing, the, you start seeing people in a strange way. So God is opening your eyes right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is Spirit of Global. Please don't miss the money session. I'm going to send the flyer shortly so that every one of us, we can engage and we can participate in what the Lord is doing. If you've been blessed, if you have some questions, get, get them ready. We will attend to them tomorrow or something. And let us know about your testimony and the shifts you're experiencing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and cause His face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. This is Spirit of Global. God bless you. I love you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.